I also was visiting a friend I wasn't very close with as well, so that didn't, that probably added the crisis element because? to the whole thing. Well, if I, I think if I had been visiting a really close friend, then I might not have felt like it was so critical to determine if I had ever loved anyone before. Because you would know you're going so. to someone that you love? Or is that? Yeah. Yes, but now. Yeah. So this yeah. is very interesting. In Socrates, the, one of the first philosophers, was known to stand outside for hours and hours because some thought or something come, came to him and he had to discover what it was. Oh, huh. So I'm... Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I'm yeah. very impressed that somehow you needed yeah. to know that then because it wasn't going to help you. It wasn't practical. It doesn't sound it. Right, it doesn't sound like true. I'm going to see someone and I... I want right, if, if I... Right, they're going to give me, right, such and such, or... Right. So you want to try yeah. again? It might be just too hard a question. Why were you brave enough and impelled that this... It was a need, really, it sounds like it. Yes, you really needed to know this. Right. And for no obvious reason so far that you've told us. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, hmm. Maybe making a connection. I wonder if it's because of making a connection, even though it was a distant friend, and feeling lonely at that time that I needed to determine that for some reason. I can uh, see. I, I can feel that if I was visiting... Yeah someone I wasn't very yeah. close to and in a long, lonely winter passing the place that I went with my previous boyfriend who I didn't feel I loved either, right? That's, I think that's what you're saying. And then wondering, I could feel a little bit better visiting this person if I knew I loved somebody. But it's interesting you're putting mm -hmm. it that way too, rather than it wasn't so crucial that if mm -hmm. anyone loved you, Right, I know that it's so interesting. You know, I, I look at it, in some ways I look at it, and, I mean, it, yeah, that it is interesting. Um, it seems like an internal, uh, yeah, it is interesting. Um, yeah, I think, you know, it's both sides, if, if you ever have been loved and if you have ever loved anyone. I think that it's interesting, isn't it? Uh, I think someone once said that, which I, I thought was interesting, that love is not a, it's, it's a verb. I don't know what she said, it's not a noun, maybe. That, that she always thought it was something that happened and that you're lucky when it comes along and you hope to notice it when it happens and that it's something that exists rather than a verb that, that, that you actually tr can take part in and that you can, that you can do. Um, just doesn't blow in like the wind or the <laughs> snow, a snow drift, something that you're doing or making, yes? Yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah, I thought it was really interesting to hear that. Um, but, you know, yeah. So bringing you back to so yeah. your, in the back seat for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And asking this question. Mm -hmm. And how are you mm -hmm. working on answering it? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's interesting. Um, well, I certainly had to stop all activity, and I, I, so what I was doing was thinking back, 
trying to search back, have I ever loved anyone? Oh, like a computer, like a search engine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, going through memories yes, and yeah. trying to oh, really... My. Yeah, that's interesting. I wasn't asking for outside a spiritual assistance. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So I, I kind of... I went through my parents and I, I didn't feel like, I, I felt like I did love my parents, but I didn't feel like that was the answer. Um, and even my brother, I didn't feel like that was the answer. Uh, but I finally came across that I had loved my cat. So when you said you loved your parents, and mm. but why is it that not the answer then? Um, I think, I know, that's interesting. Yeah, why is that not the answer? I think that it's because it, I had mixed feelings. It didn't feel pure, which, yeah, that is interesting. I wonder why that well, wasn't the answer. That's an answer. Maybe you didn't feel pure. They weren't getting in touch yeah. with you. So you might have felt that you were just a little... Not, yeah, a little mixed you wanted a, feelings. You wanted a, sh a more clear, yeah, just pure, a pure like, love. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe also just the whole, I don't know, I guess now I don't want to get into my head about it, so I won't. Um, yeah, so I remembered that my cat, Streaker, um, that I actually really had loved that cat. And uh, yeah, that enabled me to move on. And it's interesting because ever since I made that proclamation to myself, I've had a much uh, closer relationship with cats. Well, yeah. but tell us how you, I think there's some, yeah. uh, I remember, tell us how, about Streaker mm. and how you know that you loved him. Mm. Him, was it him? Uh, yes, it was, yes. actually. Um, I had a memory of being in the laundry room when I was a child and talking to Streaker and ex explaining to Streaker that I really knew that Streaker could talk and but I knew they had an agreement that they couldn't talk back and that that was fine I he, understood that he talked to other cats you mean but not to you yes that they're they English, were they? able yes English yeah. I think yeah and you told them I know you do that and yes yeah and I understand you're not allowed to do it with me yeah um did he say anything no, I mean, I, he didn't break the agreement. Oh. <laughs> and, yeah, so I told him um, that was, you know, I understand that. I know that, so, but that I also know that you can understand me. And I just want you, when you go visit my friend Jerry's cat, who happened to live about 14 miles away, um, that to say hi. Um, yeah, so I remember having this special relationship with the cat in the laundry room and talking with that cat and loving that cat. Mm. And that made all the difference for some reason. Uh, and the difference you were explaining a little bit meant meant that you were able to, and you got in the front seat? And yes, uh-huh. And how would yeah. you describe that to the difference? Um, I think it was an answer in my heart, actually, hmm. that I needed to have an answer. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great 
love story for a cold winter night. Yeah. <laughs> Is there more or? I, I think that's, yes. yeah. Hmm. yeah. Well, it's a hard story to follow, told so sincerely. I'll try to be sincere as best as I can. And I have a similar story. It begins when a new acquaintance, really, of mine. <clears throat> His name is Dr. Tuna. And I met him because my girlfriend, when my girlfriend introduced me to him, she says, this is Dr. Tunup, and he can come and put oil in your car and your home. You don't have to take it to a station. So I call Dr. Tunup, and he does this. And a few days later, an old friend of mine calls me, a philosophy teacher, and says, do you know anybody who could change my oil. It's just astounding that she does this. <clears throat> She's into Wicca. Maybe she had some. <clears throat> and so I mentioned Dr. Tuna, who goes over there, changes her oil, sits and talks for an hour, drives off in his Dr. Tuna truck, and then comes back to the porch where they were sitting. As he's driving away, turns around and says, can I have your phone number? I'd love to talk with you again. She gives it to him, and they begin going out together. And so since he's the boyfriend of my, one of my best friends, we talk, and when he comes to change my oil, and he asks me to do things, go to see musical comedies. And I, when he's in my room after doing the oil, and he says, Mike, would you like to go see Sound of Music in Beverly? And I say, oh, thank you. Thank you, I call him Brucey also. Thank you, Brucey, but you know, I'm really working on a book and I'm teaching lots of classes and there's many books I want to read, so I really don't like to go out that much. And you say, you really shouldn't ask me because I really can't say yes almost all the time. And Brucey says, it surprises me, I really can't do justice to this. What do you mean? That's no way to talk to a friend. I don't accept that answer. Give me another one. And it feels like, and I've never felt this before, from just anger, that someone kicked me in the, in the gut. Because Brucey, I later learned, describes himself as a rageaholic, as his father was. Mm. So he's good at this. Mm. He's also good at fixing oil. Everyone's got their hobbies and strengths. Mm. And, but I'm not, although I'm not nearly as powerful in speech as Brucey, <clears throat> I don't give in. And I say, I, well, I'm sorry you feel that way, but that's the way it is now with me. Well, we do become friends after a while and do do some things together. And some friends of mine are visiting, one friend, one friend of mine is visiting and his wife from Iowa, and I had known him my first year at the University of Chicago. We were roommates. And he comes with his new wife, and I'm single, and he has two children, and he's a professor emeritus, and I'm an adjunct faculty, <laughs> UMass Lowell. <laughs> he has a house, and he's published, and I'm living in my little condo in Cambridge, and he comes, and he loves, and Bob loves me. He really loves me. I didn't love him back in return, someone like maybe yourself. <clears throat> and I'm shaking just being with him. These, I, uh, he, I, I think I keep it under control, but I really feel very insecure, inadequate, comparative. Look what he's done with his life. Look what I've done with mine. And he still loves me my, way more than I, him. Mm. He's, well, he's a good, you know, a, a healthier person than I. 